What if you say I had Chucky as Sacred Gear Part 2? It's I, Wacky Anime, what if here? Here to present you with it. Let's go ahead and get into this. And before we do, I have a second channel known as Midnight Psycho. It's a gaming channel, and I play games such as Among Us, Resident Evil Village, Poppy Playtime. I know that one sounds like a creepy uncle that you probably know when you were a kid and don't really want to talk to now. That may or may not be hiding in your closet as I speak. But hey, let's just go ahead and get into this. Issei is currently in a very panicked state. He's hyperventilating at the moment. His very heart feels as if it's about to drop. No, it feels like it's about to burst or pop like a balloon that has been encountered with a needle. He's, at this moment, very unstable mentally. He knows that Chucky will cause so many casualties if he's left unchecked. So as soon as he heard Rhea say that his so-called sacred gear was active, the only thing he could come in mind was Chucky. Because it's the only thing that has always been with him. And always there. So as soon as he heard this, he started to run trying to find Chucky. Tried to run out of the ORC building. But he was grabbed by Kiba. By the wrist, very tightly and firmly. While Kiba ended up asking him, What's going on? And all that Issy responded with was, Chucky. Chucky is what's going on. And Kiba merely said, Oh, you mean the killer doll thing? Didn't you go to a mental hospital for that? Like, you ended up saying that there was a killer doll going around slashing people? Like, who's gonna really believe that? Kiba said. While Akino agreed by just nodding her head, so did Rias. And Issei ended up saying, Believe whatever the fuck you want. Just let go of me so I can stop the casualties. Once he said this, all that happened was Kiba ended up trying to neck chop him. But Issei saw, saw him re reach towards him and was quite cautious and moved back. Seeing the neck chop that was about to come and moving backwards from it didn't really help him because all that Kiba did was move his hand trajectory. Tra all he did was move his hand just to the left and slapped him in the face. So hard that he broke his tooth and he went unconscious. Kiva merely put him in the ORC room and told everyone that we need to watch this whack job before he does something in Ko High that'll get all the devils noticed or even Sacred Gears known. If that happens, then all hell's gonna break loose here. Pun intended, what Kiba said. While Akino, Rias, and Konako are all thinking that he could have done that a little bit better could have actually asked him, or, you know, not just knocked him the fuck out. But hey, who are we to complain? And Grimory just merely thinks in her head, Oh, yeah, I'm the person that owns the barrage. And says this out loud. While Kiba merely says, I did it in, in, in defense, I did it because he seemed very crazy, and seemed like he was going to do something very stupid. As he ended up saying this, they heard a knock at the door. And they wondered who this could be. Kiba ended up walking towards the door, saying that he'll get it. When he opened the door, he saw a box. And it labeled... It didn't have a label from where it was sent. And the box merely said, Your friend till the end, Heidi Ho, on the top of it in bold letters. And Kiba merely picked up the box and brought it in. And asked them, Did you guys order anything? They, they all merely said no. Issei was unconscious, so he didn't really get a reply. So, once they ended up opening the box to see what it was, after thoroughly searching through it with magic, just to see if it's anything explosive, they didn't find any magic linked to it. Except for a tiny sliver, but many objects have a little bit of magic in them, so it isn't that mysterious. So they ended up opening it since it was not something dangerous, they assumed. Once they opened it, they saw this doll with red hair and blue eyes. And this doll was quite odd. It had 
something known as the good guy as a good guy written on it on its current shirt and once Kiba lifted it up in his hands it twisted its head in front of Kiba and said Heidi ho I'm Chucky your friend till the end and Kiba noticed its eyes started twitching when it said this uncontrollably twitching and its head was turning in 360s this creeped Kiba out he dropped it and it fell on the floor and fell directly under the couch and as soon as that happened everyone freaked out because this thing was known as Chucky and this kid over there as soon as they looked towards Issei they said this kid said something about some doll named Chucky and all the stories so is this actually true or is this some type of prank from him I think it's most likely a prank honestly and they ended up looking at Issei thinking he might have sent this doll ahead of time knowing something this, like this might happen he's quite a crafty enemy is what they assumed they think he might be a fallen angel or something considering the power that he's emitting isn't really human at all it's something supernatural but it doesn't really seem like a fallen angel or angel or devil but they don't really know so they merely just look at Issei and they forget all about the doll I mean Kiba tried to find it but he couldn't find it anywhere he just assumed that maybe it might have just got you know dropped somewhere else like it might have slid somewhere else so they all ended up leaving the the room where Issei was in not before Koniko decided to go ahead and pick up Issei and take him into a different room from the ORC club room she calmly took him to the room beside the club room and put him into a bed. As soon as he was laid down into the bed, Koniko left him, and so did Akino and them. They all went to the room across from the hall of the club room, right across from it. Mainly in case anything happens, they can know. Kiba immediately remembered something before he walked in there with them to discuss about what was happening. He remembered when he dropped the doll, he ended up dropping a pendant of his. It was quite a special pendant because it was while well, the remains of his, well, brothers in arms, well, not brothers in arms, more like his siblings, the people from the holy, holy experiments, from the whole holy sword incident. He ended up going into the into the ORC club room. As soon as he opened the door, he saw that the Chucky doll was placed in Reese's seat in the middle of the table and it was staring at it was staring directly at Kiba as soon as Kiba moved to the side to get out of its vision because it was creeping him out he noticed the head turned to the side at him and it just merely said Heidi ho Heidi ho over and over Kiba thought it was mis malfunctioning or something as they ended up scanning it and saw there was barely any magic in it so it couldn't be anything like a bomb or anything so they didn't see any sense of it they just thought it was just something that he sent ahead of time so he merely walked up towards it picked it up again and looked at the back and as soon as he opened up where the batteries were supposed to be he noticed there was no batteries in it and this was quite odd is what Kiba was thinking and as soon as he was thinking this as he looked at the back of Chucky to see the batteries weren't there. Chucky's head turned, to the, turned all the way to 360 to stare at Kiba, and he said, Hey, you fucker! Why'd you remove my the shirt from my back? You some type of perv or something? Is this kinky to you? And as soon as he said this, Kiba dropped the doll and said, What the fuck? And the doll ran off. He saw this doll literally pick itself up and run the fuck away. <laughs> this scared the shit out of Kiba. Kiba legit shit himself. And <laughs> as soon as Chucky ran off, he literally said, That kid just shat himself. Wow, that reaction was priceless. And as soon as Kiba saw him running away, he lost sight of him. It's like he disappeared from view. He looked around and tried to find out where he was. He started calmly walking out towards the front door. Don't even try to find his pendant no more after the shit he saw. And as soon as he walked towards the front door, this couch, which was right beside it, 
there was a little hand extending a little knife from it, and it cut right behind Kiba's heel and cut his tendons. And as soon as that happened, Kiba fell to the ground, and he looked towards where he was cut, and he saw that it was quite the deep cut. He couldn't really feel his foot. He couldn't really feel his foot that well. He couldn't really feel much from it right now, and he can't really stand on it. And he was stuck on the ground. He started trying to crawl to the front door, and then he realized this is a fucking doll. Why the fuck am I pussying out like this? He just pulls out his sword. And he starts slashing at the couch. He cuts the couch in half, and Chucky's not there. He swore he he felt the slash, and from where Chucky Chucky's height would be, he figured he'd be under the couch, but no, he wasn't. He, he looked all around the room with his eyes while being propped against the side of the door, trying to open it with one hand while having the other hand with the sword. He didn't see anything, though. He didn't see anything off, at least. He didn't see Chucky anywhere, or some type of doll, as he would refer to it as, until he looked to the side, to the side of the door, and he saw Chucky looking at him, saying, "Hidey ho, motherfucker!" And he received a stab in the left eye. And as soon as this happened, Kiba slashed directly at it with as much strength as he could with his right hand, which had his sword in it. As soon as he sliced that. As soon as he sliced at Chucky, Chucky disappeared into black smoke. And this confused Kiba immensely. And Kiba wondered where this fucker went. And he looked all around and didn't see a single thing. And he now can't see from his left side because his eyeball was just stabbed. So he only has his right side to really lean on. He could only see from his right side, but he couldn't see anything from there. While unknown to him, all Chucky did was move to his left side. Just so he couldn't see him. So Chucky was fucking with him the entire time, waving his hands, and even waving his eyeball that he had to remove out with the knife when he pulled it out. Even waving his eyeball in front of him. Not really saying anything, but doing, leaving subtle sound movements to where he would look in that direction and he just switched sides. Then Chucky eventually just got bored, and he just ended up disappearing. He just disappeared into black smoke, which Kiba thought it was completely safe after a while. He grabbed up towards the towards the doorknob, he opened it, and he felt relieved when he finally was about to leave the room. But as soon as he opened it, he felt a sharp pain in his back. Apparently Chucky is right behind him. As soon as he looked behind him, he just sees this little doll smiling at him and Kiba merely says you doll fucking wax freak and all that uh, all that Chucky says is oh that's the best you can come up with Goldilocks I thought you'd do something better since you look like a Justin Bieber knockoff also are you sure you're not into into men I heard that around the school You've rejected so many females. I'm pretty sure you were going to try to get it on with Issei over there. And he started doing the... Doing a certain motion, which everyone should know. In front of Kiba. While... Merely saying, Alright, see you later, jack off. Well, I guess I won't, since you're going to be going to hell, right? And all that happened was... Chucky just walked out of the room. Kiba just fell to the ground right in front of the door that he had just opened just to get stabbed in the back and is now bleeding out. This was a very loud thud when he fell to the ground and it was audible since it was out of the ORC club room. Which the ORC club room was soundproof because in case anything went wrong and they had to torture someone well no one, no one would hear from outside of it which worked against them in this matter since they couldn't hear a damn thing that was happening. When Kiba fell to the ground with the audible thud, all of a sudden, Rius left her room, and everyone that was doing a meeting left of the room and looked to the, to the side across from them. They saw Kiba on the ground with knife wounds all, all over him and his eye gouged out by a knife, with his attendant's heel completely cut 
on his left leg. This was quite the shock to them. They ended up looking at him and needing to use tons of magic to get him at least to where he could walk again. They can't re really revive his eye though. They had to get tons of magicians, tons of healing mages to heal him. Nothing really helped with the eye. He could still walk again, but with just a limp. And as soon as he was fully awake and he was okay, after a few weeks, he ended up telling them what happened. And he ended up asking where was Issei. Where's Issei? After he told them what happened with the doll. And they ended up saying, oh, Issei, he was taken by Sir Zex, and he's currently going through interrogation. And as soon as as soon as those words left from Rius's lips, all that happened was Kiba said, you fool, that's what he wants. And as soon as he said this, they heard a loud explosion. And that's where I'm going to end it. I hope you all enjoyed. And I hope you all like this part, and maybe the next part.